Things been changing lately Feeling sexy chasing Dreaming ADHD Seeing people faintly Never thought I'd make it Living in the matrix At different stages, yeah How to learn my language Quality embracing Takes a lot of courage to flourish But man, I'm here right now On my scar stitch Had a weed out sound Where my garden is Got me near the ground For Bagani's pit Still my seeds they sprout When the stars are lit and loud <laughs> um, Welcome back to a Harder Plays uh, podcast episode uh, My name's Timmy And um, today we're doing Another music interview And I'm very fortunate enough To to get the chance to interview um, one of the questions I was going to ask, how to pronounce How to pronounce my name. Well, I pronounce it Tigar. Tigar? Right. But it's an acronym, so it's T-G-A-R. There should be dots in between, but it's not. Yeah, which works out yeah. okay And it, it stands for to grow and remember, so it's something I came that's up with really a long time ago. Oh, yeah. that's really cool. Um, and so it's, it's not really a right or a wrong way to say it, but so many people question that, like, how do you say it? Like, but that... I feel like he's good because it makes them question it, you know, then they're more interested and they want to know more sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and I agree, like, Tika also sounds really cool. Yeah. Like, I, when I was thinking, I was like, I don't know what it, like, stands for, but I assumed it was some kind of acronym. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, we... Um, I usually like to kind of like introduce the artist by asking a few questions yeah. like essentially it's like letting you kind of introduce yourself yeah. um, it's just I feel like sometimes it's better than researching and kind of like word vomiting something that I've like read someone else say and essentially yeah. a lot of the artists because I'm I'm a guy who I mean which makes sense because I found you on Instagram I just find like most of the artists on Instagram yeah. that I listen to because I don't like people who are like to me it's not that I don't like mainstream artists it's just it's very oversaturated and you can access it anytime whereas I'm yeah. always curious about who's out there who's about to put out this song that I've never heard before or this style yeah and you know like different collabs I always say like the best I, I think I was just saying that before the best um, stuff comes out of collaborating collaborating with people in person and finding people on Instagram because there's so much hidden talent out there Exactly, but yeah. A lot of the oversaturated stuff goes into, like, they're the people that are doing shows all the time. Like, you, exactly. you'll notice if you go to, like, local Sydney shows, you'll see a lot of the same artists all the time. Yeah. And, like... <laughs> and, and, it, and it's like, also, even those artists, a lot of them, it's not until you kind of see some of the behind the scenes, they start to drop, that you realise um, how much, like, that exposure means to them and how, like, yeah. recent it is their success is or maybe how long they've been in the industry and, but, like this is like their first sort of real in front of the screen exposure yeah and, and it's it's very interesting yeah. um and then you know the other reason being that like i just don't know necessarily everyone's inspiration so like they'll mention like 10 different artists and they'll just be like a real music discussion guy would probably be able to like chip in on this and be like yeah talk about like 10 minutes worth about this guy but i'm just like I'm really here for you, so yeah, yeah. let's just let's just focus on that. But like that being said, I did want to say like so we were talking about our, how our connection started. So I remember on Instagram, it was one of those things where yours obviously I, I go through phases, and you know your Instagram algorithm yeah. obviously calibrates real fast. You yeah. just like click into one rap video, and then like for the next like five minutes, you'll probably be seeing different rap artists. Yeah. And I think yours just came up and. I can't remember what song it was at the time. I think it was, um, it hasn't been that long. It would have been Heaviness is Light. Yeah, um, I, f I think so. I was, yeah. When I was listening back, I think it sounded like it's it recorded was like in the bush and stuff. Yeah. 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 I re remember running ads on that video. Yeah. And I was, I was thinking, I was like, oh, I like the sound of this. And then I, I, I think it flew over my head as well that like you were o Aussie. Yeah. And then... <laughs> And then when you mentioned it, you're like, we've, we've reached out. And I think that was, we were saying like, that was the most interesting part because not a lot of people reach out. Or when some people reach out, they just kind of say hi, but then the conversation dies. Yeah. But we actually had a <clears throat> decent amount to talk about. And um, you were just kind of essentially kind of saying like, oh, well, you know, thanks for like, um, you know, making the, the connection. Um, where are you from? So I can like, you know, if you're close enough, I can like loop, loop you in on performances. Yeah. Which I really appreciate because I'm like, I do want to like attend more of these things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Now I think, I guess like randomly, we just from time to time, we kind of were talking about like, if you like release new stuff, you generally kind of reach out and send it like directly, even though, you know, people yeah. follow and will get it. I could be actually really slack at that. I know that's so many artists are doing that. Like they have something come out. They're like, listen to this. I, I feel like I, 
feel like yours is more personal though because a yeah. lot of them is yeah listen to this but it's usually just uh comment this word and then like they'll send you something automatically through yeah. the system so yeah. there's no actual interaction there and if you reply to it well they probably won't even see it yeah and that's the thing like i feel personality is a lot and i feel like as a, as a brand as an artist you should be connecting with people and showing them your personality but i feel like a lot of artists are just trying to sell people stuff that makes exactly sense. yeah like um i remember like some artists even like directly say um oh well you know merch just isn't that important to me right now because i'd rather just be like not like what people focus on yeah. and i'm like that's true because you're producing music and like you really kind of want, want to at the end of the day feel like people are supporting you not say like because like oh gosh you're so hot yeah i mean sure it's a nice compliment but yeah. still like you probably want someone to come to you and say like look i find like this music really helped me this moment or like it really like gave me like some inspiration yeah. and i think like i think the reason i i actually that made me reminded me that heaviness and light there was probably a few phrases in there that i must have like really resonated to i think did i like comment on it or something but i must have like liked it because i felt like a particular part of it that's usually why i would like and then like follow a guy straight away because yeah. like, what i would do is when music comes up it starts showing you a lot and the more you like it it becomes kind of crazy on instagram sometimes and, I do, wanna, and I do want to yeah. see other stuff too <laughs> but i love it and i like yeah. i always add music and then just like the next day i know i'm on my commute i get to like try out new songs but what i do is there's a very difference like there's some where i'm like that's a nice song that's pretty good but i'm not feeling this artist like entirely or like it's interesting enough that i want to like keep it in the loop so i'll like it so yeah. i can like keep it in the algorithm yeah. but like then there's artists like you where i'll be like no i feel it and i also understand the music and i also like the artists like overall like everything and i'll just usually immediately follow it and also add it to spotify straight away yeah because you know it's an extra step yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have to like go through to the app well that's the, that's the main goal of like trying to get people on board too because exactly that it's so the platform is so oversaturated with different artists and stuff and people see so many so you've really got to stick out and make that difference you know like it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I always <laughs> ask artists, it's like, it's so much work right now, isn't it? Because you have so much more access to people, but it's so many channels, which means actually you have a lot more work. Every single channel is extra, like, attention. Yeah, it's like, it's manage. never been easier to get yourself out, but it's also never been this hard to get yourself out. Because, because you're completing with all these saturation, So much right? competition, yeah. Yeah, 100% it's it's I, I don't know how you guys do it like it's just you that's why i say like time management for music artists actually have to be relatively good like people who don't realize that like it's not just like oh yeah i gotta wake up at this time and you know get to this roughly around this time it's more like you have like one hour to do this and then you got like two hours to manage those other channels too yeah but you're also going to meet people and write and you know and things don't just come to you right yeah i actually like have something called notion i don't know if you heard of notion it's a calendar app where it's like color coded and shit and it's like the whole day oh, just filled out in like pockets of time and stuff like i have to do that too because i have so many spinning plates and if i was just like oh, i'll do this that do that i don't know where my brain would be at but it would not be a healthy space yeah that makes sense yeah and then you know managing personal like things as well yeah and like you, you were just about to say then too i actually have to go out of my way to reach for stuff like and opportunities and stuff too so it's yeah. not just like I've got all this chaos, but it's like if I've got a pocket of time, that's that time where I've got to jump on doing something that is benefiting me, you know, like I've got to jump on an opportunity and reach out to someone sort of thing. Yeah, like, I mean, while we're on the subject, do you find like it's very hard in like Australia is like the opportunity is like quite limited or is it like, like... No, um, I think, I think there's a lot of opportunity out there. It's just people are too scared and unfamiliar with what to do. Yes. I think that's right. all it is. And like, like even... What connections procedure yeah I, I feel like it's still not a a very popular thing in australia at the moment so people sort of like from an outside view sort of look at it and they're like what the fuck is going on like if you go to ask someone a question they feel weird about it almost because it's not normal to them mm. so i feel that's the boundary that we've got to break yeah that that's the only hard part but the actual opportunity itself if you know how to word your stuff right and get yourself out there properly it's there's so much opportunity out there. right yeah like um 
I mean, like I'm when I, I remember when I'm like going out for like jobs, for example, and you know, it's just like handing out resumes and connecting, talking to someone. Yeah. You're always worried that I'm going to say the wrong thing or like do it the wrong way. But sometimes I've noticed like me being like more shy and saying like thank you or like oh thanks for that opportunity a little bit more than other people yeah. just because i'm awkward and stuff yeah. it actually becomes more memorable for some people because they're like oh this person's really enjoying the moment and really thankful or something like that for yeah. example you know yeah, yeah not saying that i am but you know yeah maybe i'm just like you know trashy but <laughs> but you know like it is like it really does like bring out your own personality of a weird way that's why they say like i guess like be you be weird yeah um so i was gonna ask um so like with your artist name like and, and the meaning behind it like how did you come up with it like was there like a specific like inspiration behind it or like an aspiration overall so it's sort of an embarrassing story but it's a podcast so i'll let you in on it yeah oh, so, that's what like fans are here for yeah. <laughs> the juicy <So>, tea <laughs> when i was a child i used to play a lot of minecraft yeah. I used to be a big gamer and used to play a lot of Minecraft and there was a um, YouTuber that he used to watch called TVNR Frags and I was like, that's such a sick name and I wanted to become a YouTuber and stuff when I was a kid like and make Minecraft videos like being 10 years old yeah, or whatever age I was, you know. Australia. And um, I was like, oh, I want to think of something. So I came up with a character being a giraffe <laughs> and the what name the stood for the giraffe always rests. <laughs> so I was still using those four, like his the thing was TBNR and it stood for the best never rest. So I was trying to like play off of that and try and make something out. And if you guys didn't know, my name's, my actual name's Hayden. So my name was Hayden, it used to be Hayden Tagar, that's how I used to pronounce it. Oh. For so long. And it was on like everything I played game wise, PlayStation, say Netflix, it was on everything. And I remember, um, I'm also a kitchen cabinet maker, so I'm a full-time tradesman. Um, and while I was doing my apprenticeship, we had to, we made like these plaque things and they're like, oh, figure out what you want to put on it, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people just put like license plates or something like that. Right. Their license plate on Is it. Is that like the signature for like your work or something? Or it was, like... no, so it was like, it was like an emblem sort of when we got a machine yeah. to carve out like a oh, carving right. in it. So, That's so cool. Um, That's so cool. And so I was like, oh, I don't want a license plate. That's stupid. So I was like, yeah, I've got to think really of something. Deadpan. Yeah, and, and I thought about the name Tiger and I was like, what can I do with that name? And I thought about it all day long. And that's where I came up with the girl, remember? It's, it's really cool. It's just like, it's like Tiger and a name it just really catches. There's something about it that rings really nicely. Yeah. I didn't even know there was like so much meaning behind it. Like, yeah. <laughs> what it's cool as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't think like Spotify even mentions that, right? Because like you know, Spotify always does that little blurb about like little blurb about people. Yeah. Um, but that's really cool. Yeah. And how long ago is that roughly? Um. Because your earliest release know. was. That was probably. Like 20, 20, 22. 20, 22. Yeah. At the end yeah. of twenty-two. But that name I came up with probably five, six years ago. And like, were you? Um, because, you know, Spotify being kind of like an official release place for people, so sometimes people use a lot of words and they really put it up in the like, yeah. when they're like, oh, I might start with this song. Like, how long were you kind of producing things and playing around? Like, so, that? I think, I don't know how old I would have been when I started writing, mm. but I would have been young. I, my first song would have been, I would have been like 13, 14 maybe. Like, I would have started writing. Again. Um, yeah, so I'll focus more on the questions as well. So we got to that. Um, and, you know, obviously, like, one of the most obvious questions, like, who was, like, the most influential, like, artists or artists for you when you were growing up in terms of your style? Yeah, so I always go back to three artists. Like, it's crazy. I've always listened to a, such a variety of music. It's not always just been hip-hop. It's been hip-hop, metal, indie like there's so many like dubstep like there's so many different avenues of music i've always listened to but three artists that i got into when i first started and i always go well actually i'd say four i'd say mac miller um asap rocky joey badass and mac lethal and if you don't know who mac lethal is check him out he's a okay. old <laughs> youtube rapper like back when youtube was, was buzzing sort of like, just really, getting yeah. big um oh. i actually got to meet him last year at a gig where a lot of my mates opened up for him so that was pretty cool um, is he like still big right now like already like just, oh like, yeah so he was touring they came with swifty mcveigh who is from d12 which is the, the band m&m's with yeah so it's a pretty big moment like we got to meet them 
and um yeah i, I remember because I, I like i used to listen to him as a kid all the time rinsed all his music and they had actually showed up to the show late and he started performing them so like i had a fair few to drink and i'm sitting there rapping everything and he's like keeps stopping he's like i've just got to stop for a second i've just jumped off this 12 hour flight and this kid knows fucking everything like it was such a wholesome moment bro and i got oh, to chat so to him cool. after the show and yeah it was it was really really nice but oh, i would surreal. definitely say like my style is not similar to any of theirs but i definitely take bits and pieces from each bit of their crafts and put it into my own sort of style did you get to like show a bit of your work to them at all unfortunately no <laughs> oh no Were and like a shy or was it just like too busy uh no it was more we didn't get the time because i think they had to go back to that they, they were falling like brisbane the next schedule. night or something yeah, yeah. um sound like they were running on very little sleep as well yeah yeah <laughs> it's just like flight i flight, think i was also enjoying continue. myself too much i had <laughs> way too much yeah to drink, you, know? you like, never know what thing to say first right you'd be like yeah. hmm, out of the 10 things i want to say yeah yeah how many of the 12 can i say and you want to like talk to them as people to and not come across as like these massive fans sort of thing i know you know, that's like, what i always think about like when your fans are going up there and like fan going too much kind of makes it like feel like you'll take away the moment almost yeah. Or like people who like stand up and they're just like, oh my God, so nice to meet you. <laughs> and I'm just like, Can I get Ew. a photo? Yeah. So I appreciate people like that, but I also appreciate more when people just want to talk. And yeah. Continue. Like that, that moment, like you can say like, oh, like at the end, like, can we take a photo together just for the moment? Yeah. But like, yeah, if you're like doing that, it's also kind of just like, you never even ask. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> so I actually feel like, you know, it's, it's cool that also a lot of like celebrities and stuff are just like also kind of just standing up for themselves these days. It's becoming kind of a trend where they just say like, no. this is what's going to happen right now. I'm not going to take pictures until this moment. This yeah. is how it's going to work. And I'm just like, sounds good. It's That's like, a, you know, school going on tour. Because you see so many, like, even YouTubers and stuff, they'll be recording, people just come up to them, oh, can I get a photo, get a photo? All right, so, and then they just go away. Or they just walk up, take a photo and walk off, not even say a word. I'm like, yeah, it's so bad. It's just like pop out of the corner and go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be like, see ya. <laughs> it's nice to know, <laughs> nice to know you. Um, so the other thing I was really interested in, so because, like, I don't meet that many Australian, act, like, artists, but I have, yeah. like, seen, like, one or two other singers, like, you know on instagram yeah and one of the things that they talk about is um having to maybe like change the accent into more like sort of the american accent for songs mm. or um <laughs> that dog really staring and focusing at us <laughs> um and i immediately looks away i see you. um but then like Government or like spy. saying that like you know it's too hard to understand or maybe like but like for me i feel like that would add to the uniqueness it's kind of like british people and stuff like they sing songs they don't really change the accent per se so yeah. i find that kind of intriguing like and then particularly rapping is you know it's something like quite different for some people they really enunciate like yeah then really like make it hard with every single like pronunciation i guess yeah and then some people kind of like try to roll it like more smoothly I, this is like something i've noticed yeah but like, how do you think like the Aussie accent works out for you? Well, I think there's two sides of it. I think the American market is the biggest market on the planet. Right. And so I think a lot of the time it can actually be beneficial to be putting an American accent on because you're putting yourself straight into that market. Yeah. People don't even know if you are Australian or not, unless you're doing like shows and stuff all the time. That's right. Um, but in saying that, I think it's also so important to be as authentic as possible. And that's not to say that people using the American accent are not doing the right thing, but there's two sides of it. Like, even with my music, what I'm trying to do is there's a lot of artists in this country who box themselves in with just this country in the sense of the music they make is they're putting their standard to some of the best Australian artists there are, like, chilling at draft fundamentals like people that are doing stuff here and not not the old heads like draft and fundamentals and stuff they have done stuff around the world amazingly but more of the more recent like nerve and stuff like people who are within australia big at the moment um they sort of cap themselves in they get the fame from australia and they get complacent with it and so i feel like trying to branch from australia to america is a lot harder than trying to branch from america anywhere else Right. I think what if you start in America, that's where it's already the biggest thing in the world. It's kind of like travel itself. Like yeah. Australia is literally f just far from anything. Yeah, <laughs> we're just like we're, we're just on the other side of the isolated. Planet, yeah. yeah. So I think there's definitely two sides of it, and I think people people don't think of it like that way. But 
like say Kid Leroy, for example, he doesn't really have his Australian accent mm. and he's massive. It's because he's put himself in that American market yeah. and come back. Whereas people from other parts of the planet hear our accent and like you said, they might find it hard to understand or something. But what I'm trying to create with my music is using my natural voice because that is what it is mm. but with the actual instrumentals and with the actual production of the music i'm americanizing it like i'm making it less aussie hip-hop yeah boom bappy and like what people see here. Less <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> essentially. essentially and trying to create something new out of it something that's yeah. already partially happening over here partially happening over there do you know what i mean and yeah. like meeting in the middle yeah. and i think that's a really good idea. in that i'm making something new um, that's all. Um, I'm, I hate cutty cook shit. I like to try and be as authentic as possible and try and do stuff that other like people are doing. Aren't it for doing. the sake of doing like something. Yeah, and I was going to say like I agree because I feel like and the reason I asked that is because like I'm curious about what you think because yeah. for me when I heard your like style of singing, um, like in rapping, like with along with like all the production, yeah. to me that sounded like from what i hear generally most people actually find aussie accent really pleasant and really interesting and really unique yeah. and to not play off that i feel like it's also kind of a missed opportunity and i'm like if you feel it from your heart like what you the way you sound in a certain way is already like is what you like yeah then 100 percent like that should be like what your voice should be yeah because then it's yeah again like not authentic yeah well i think a lot of people use the american accent too because again because that market is so big and we as growing up you don't really listen to much aussie artists no it's and there wasn't that much of it i don't think no. like, until more recent years that's why like people don't talk about it yeah but i think because you grow up with it it's just saturated in your brain and so that's why a lot of people that start they just start with that american accent naturally and that is what feels right to them which i think is perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that but even with my voice i even in the Aussie scene, I feel like people that are using the Aussie voice, not everyone, but a good majority of people exaggerate that voice as well. So it sounds more Aussie than what their actual voice sounds. I wouldn't even know how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to always sound more like me every time I release, like try and just me talking right now. I want that to sound like my music. Do you know what I mean? So it sounds like it's truly me. Because if you think about some of those big American artists, you hear them rap, you hear them sing, and then you hear them talk, and it's all the same voice. That is who they are. And so that's all I'm trying to do too. Not exaggerate anything, not water anything down, but be me. Yeah, that's that's really good. And that's yeah. a really interesting point, which we'll come back to in like another question. Yeah. So this was what I was really interested in. So I'll admit like, I listen to some of your music, but I don't go through all of it. And like, it usually comes to like when the interviewing point, like then I'll be like, it's almost like I need to study like this in, in depth, yep. but also like enjoy it. So yep. then I went into like the playlist and I was like going through it and I was like, there was like one or two songs that I was like, Ooh, I really, really like the sound of it. But like what surprised me the most is let's say like you have like, cause you have a decent amount of release. Let's say like it's probably around like, like 10 songs or something 15 marker, 15 isn't? yeah and like with between these 15 i would say like one of the things that people always often kind of misjudge is rapping sounds like oh kind of like oh yeah give or take the same yeah. but like out of those 15 songs all of them sound so different to each other yeah that's the coolest part like you know say for example spartacus one yep. of your early ones or um was it ignis yep <laughs> ignis i thought was really really cool and it was like i was like being like one of your first release that's like a pretty amazing production yeah and you know comp said it was really good it was really easy to understand but it was so different to say something like butterfly and then the melody itself was really different so yeah. i wanted to kind of talk about like what your thoughts are on like how i guess like what you can tell people about like the versatility and sort of adaptability of like rapping actually because yeah. it just it can create so many different sounds yeah and i think it's kind of like people just it flies over their head yeah well at, at the beginning like the first year of me releasing music i sort of was just experimenting with a bunch of stuff like as you can tell like it's all very very different that's mm. just because i didn't know what my sound was i just wanted to try everything wanted to have fun with it sort of thing and then sort of this year a lot more you could tell if you've been following my journey for a while you can tell the quality has gone way through the roof and that's because this year I focused on my marketing and focused on my branding and my sound. And I think I've started to really form something tight and niche. And again, that that's due to trying different things all the time and figuring out what works for me rather than cookie cutting something and <laughs> like what works for everyone else. Um, 
And so you can definitely tell a massive difference with all my releases last year compared to this year. Like everything sounds so different, but the further you go along, it sounds tighter and tighter and starts to sound more and more like me. But like still you know exactly sounding, what to do. Yeah, but it still sounds different. Like, and that's what I try and do is what can I do that brings me out and you can hear it and you're like, oh, it's, it's going to be a T-Guide track, but it's still, it's you never expect what's going to come out. It's yeah, like it's different. like the artist is like, genre or style but then you just know like every album is going to be something that you just you you, you can never be sure like you can't predict it yeah, yeah yeah and it's really weird i was going to say like the word that comes to me is like it, and it goes back to what you said about like why you should keep your like early works because it's the coolest part for me as a person who's listening yeah. when you talk about this kind of stuff is listening to like something like ignis then kind of listening to like your recent release yeah. that combination like is so exciting because you can always tell like that in that early phase where they're just like you can kind of start to hear from track by track where they're kind of slowly honing in on something yeah. and you can't always necessarily tell say like if you don't know like the language for like music yeah. or how to like you know the jargons and stuff yeah. but you just kind of feel like there's something coming coming slowly and it's almost like something not in any bad way but like it's loose in the beginning but it's become tight like yeah. you're tightening up all the loose loopholes where you're like I don't like that as much yep. that was a little bit too sloppy or like and then yeah. like it just kind of starts really fitting into place i think that's so just cool that's due to the repetition like just the work over time like yeah. obviously if you, if you do the same thing every single day it's it can't get worse yeah it's only going to get better yeah um so i feel like that's why a lot of those like little things like that where it tightens and stuff a lot of it that like when people first start music that they don't expect is the unfamiliarity and being uncomfortable with stuff again it like and a lot of people just beat the same dead horse over and over again and they don't expand oh, their, their skill set <laughs> and in doing that you don't get as comfortable and it takes you a lot longer to get to that point whereas i feel like i've tried so many different things now that i if you throw something at me i could probably jump on it and figure something out you know and i think that like leads to like something that i'm, I'm obviously like as music in general is always something people are curious about but i think like for rapping it's also quite a interesting process or must be yep. like what is your usual like creative is there kind of like sort of a creative process you go through like usually when it comes to a new song like because i think at the moment like when you when we started chatting you were saying you were basically releasing one song per month yep. which is a really good schedule for a lot of artists and like keeping you on track and yep. forcing you to like really like focus yeah um, but like, what kind of process do you kind of go through? Do you like talk to people or do you like have like something that comes to mind or just one, whenever something flows out? Flows so out? I think in the first year I was literally writing every single day. Like I was writing so often Yeah. and that worked for the time. And I feel like I built this massive repertoire of skills and stuff. And it, it really helped me at the time, but this year has been a lot more focusing on the business side of stuff and the marketing side of stuff. So Which I haven't been yeah. writing as much as frequently, mm. but that's also been good because I feel like when you write all the time, you, you lose material to talk about. It's like you're not taking a breath to let your brain rest and recharge and like absorb yeah. new things, right? Well, it, it's like, so like, especially within the last couple of months, I've realized how important it is to live your life as much as it is like... Your experiences. Yeah, like... That's what feeds it. If you don't have any experiences and you're not living life, you have nothing to write about, you know? Exactly. Like, and not, not only that, it's such an unhealthy balance if you're just like stuck in a cave for hours every day writing, you know. Yeah, like, you're, you're bound to get like just one direction depressed in one yeah, way or yeah. the other. Yeah, yeah, because my whole day is for like a good year, year and a half was just work a whole day in my day job. Like wake up, I would do admin stuff and then I'd go straight to work, work all day long, come home, shower, do everything I need to in the afternoon. And then I have sessions in the night and stuff or content shoots or whatever. And that'd be my whole day, like every day, rinse and repeat. And That's then, when you miss out on all your vitamin Ds too. Yeah. <laughs> and then Literally. even even on the weekend, it would just be like, that was my excitement because I'm like, oh yes, I get to get more work in. But like... Yeah, I understand that feeling though. Yeah, it's like, there's a, there, there's a massive balance. Like you can't do, you can't be too disciplined or you can't be too lousy you have to be somewhere you need like and and it's important like i guess like you having like you know a partner like that probably helps as well like you oh, need yeah. that extra person that sometimes just reminds you to drag you out a little and just uh, you know let's grab a coffee or yeah. let's have something to eat 
and then you'd be like oh yeah i guess i have to eat anyway and then like be like oh yeah you know and then we haven't hung out for a bit and then like that would kind of remind you to like go out there and you often don't even feel that like amount of like joy and all everything that you're missing out on until you actually like take step your back. Yeah, yeah step back essentially yeah and like the reason I say I relate to that because like, I think I was like at home for like three or four days in a row too. Yeah. And then I went to work and I was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like, you know, cause you're like talking to people you like and you know, yeah. if you enjoy what you do. Yeah. So like, I understand that. And, and yeah, that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, I feel like that can be hard to like, as an artist, I think, someone had said it before like ages ago and i'm like that can't be true they're like oh being an artist is one of the hardest jobs there is because like from an outside view you're like it's not that hard you write songs you put it out that's it you but, get to be on the you know computer at home all the time or yeah chill or oh, but bro there is so much that goes into this shit it's ridiculous i just like always see like different artists is talking about i feel like every single artist is like now that i'm like actually talking to more of them like and yeah. getting into their lifestyle it's just it blows your mind because one everyone is basically managing you know easily three or four different channels yeah to say the least yeah and that's like a minimum essentially yeah that's not really marketing itself that's more like just connecting and trying to get your stuff out there yeah. for, to the general public yeah and then there's like what you said like business marketing opportunities which i wouldn't even know like where to start with that kind of stuff but like yeah and i think that's like a confusing <laughs> point for probably young artists yeah and you yourself you, you, i mean we didn't mention it but you told me like in one of the earliest conversations because i think i was curious i was just like you look really successful i'm like i wonder how old you are and you're like i'm only 23 and i'm like you're literally like 11 years like younger than me i'm like holy <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and like, that's another question I kind of wanted to ask. I would say like, did you think it was like, um, was a big struggle for you trying to like, kind of find a sort of marketing opportunity, like in the business kind of side of things? Um, like, and as a young person, like, how would you say you should navigate that? Like, say if you wanted to get into this industry? I would say it's not hard. You've just got to find the opportunity. And it was exactly what we were talking about mm. before. You know, there's plenty of opportunity out there. It's just a matter of putting yourself out and asking the questions and stuff. And like, say, what would be like a good example? Like, say, if you went out to a pub or something and like, would you, I don't know, go up there and ask them if they were looking for performers and just like try to pitch your work or like, what would you Well, say? even the other day I had, I went to the, I was like doing shopping. I got my hair cut and stuff. I got my barber into my music and then I also sold a ticket as well, just buying clothes because which I live like an hour and a half out west <laughs> in the city and this chick's like, oh, because I was buying green clothes and she's like, oh, you're lucky green, do you? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's actually like on brand. I'm a music artist, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, no way, are you on Spotify? Blah, blah. And I told her and oh. she's listening to it and I'm like, oh, if you like it, I've actually got a show coming up, blah, blah, blah. And just putting myself out there like yeah. that, like the literally hustle. living, I'm just living my day to day but like towards my music like i'm like that was me shopping for clothes for me as an artist you mm. know like and just doing stuff like that like putting yourself out there um it's even a connection between people like yeah. real people i had a deal that i had signed in november last year with people that i was working with like relentlessly like i was going to them all the time and it was again putting myself out there and always trying something new and different them coming to me and being like we want you to be a part of this because we see so much potential in you like that was me putting myself out there into the world and yeah. just and giving it a fucking shot like that's all you need to do is just go out try your hardest don't box yourself in too like don't sit in your room as i was talking about before don't yeah. sit in your room and just like work Expect on yourself all the to time by themselves there's definitely like a, again a balance like you need to put those reps in but you also need to put yourself out there and feel uncomfortable get into the world you know like you want your music to be heard, then you've got to be heard before the music gets heard, you know? Like, you've got to put yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah. I think that's so important, so valuable. And would you say, like, it's also obviously very big about, like, finding your own voice, but then, like, really sticking to it, like, believing it. Like, I feel like mm. when you're doing a project, yeah, you are your harshest, like, judge. Critic, yeah. Yeah, your harshest, like, critic. And really, it's all about you being... You have to 100% believe it. Like, basically, you see all these different artists. So many artists struggle for a while before they really make it, like, like to a point where they're like, I've done it. Yeah. But, you know, so many people would have said no to them or, like, this sucks. Yeah. But how many people now would be like, this is, like, the most amazing thing I've ever heard and this is, like, this is me, like, this is, like, my kind of music. Yeah. And 
for that to only have happened is for basically you and like the probably a handful of people to really believe like what you're doing it's that key word is belief like believing yeah that passion for everyone yourself. doesn't believe themselves for so fucking it's long hard. but this like the sooner you believe in yourself the sooner you'll start to see opportunities come up more and more because you're putting yourself out there you're confident with it and you just believe in yourself like people aren't going to believe you if you don't even believe in yourself exactly like you can't sell something that you just like simply don't believe in yourself exactly and it's a lot easier said than done but i feel like especially younger artists struggle with that you know like yeah i mean it's it's a lot of things going around like your head i guess yeah a lot of things to consider yeah so this one was like i thought it would be like really interesting it's more like a fun question so if there is like one or two people like uh, however many you want to talk about really but like who would you really really want to like if you get the choice to like just by saying it collaborate with right i I had an interview on a radio station the other night and i said the same answer as well jk47 if you're listening to this brother absolutely love his music um i'm very like i build my music around being natural and earthy and shit and i find i love the australian uh the aboriginal hip-hop scene at the moment like jk47 kobe d um barker love them all like they bring such a different flavor and i feel like jk has that very like smooth soulful shit but he also is very passionate with what he says and i feel like we would definitely work something very well together yeah like and i feel like there's a lot of different sound things building now right like this it seems like the sound mixing industry itself is starting to come up with a lot of different things yeah like um also for example like i don't know if you heard like i think like there's a there was a guy talking about like starter house being a thing this year yep and like you know it's essentially people just like echoing like the same words okay, and like yeah. mixing into the music so like there's so many different things going around and you know aboriginal like music yep. is such a like thing of its own like that just stands completely separate to everything else it's so recognizable yeah but like it's it's so much mis- mi- like missed opportunity there yeah. yeah well i think as well like a lot of like my whole brand's based around growing in nature and shit and i use in if you hear some of my songs there's a whip bird in some of the uh songs which is native to eastern australia oh only place on the planet that has that sound and i remember when i was younger i I always used to i still bushwalk all the time i love the bush and i used to hear that sound i was like bro if i ever make music one day um, I'm figuring a way. To, I'm figuring a way how to use that in that's my music. That's really cool. And so that's what I do. I and, didn't notice that. Yeah, and people like JK or Kobe D, like that's very Aboriginal na- native. Yeah. And I feel like their music showcases a lot of that nature and shit, and that's why I think it would work so well. Like, there's not a lot of artists that are like that, but I yeah. just notice it from the Aboriginal. Like our side own, of like our own, like culture has so much, like um, I guess, like material to play around with. Yeah. And it brings something different that Pete, like, it's it's heavily based for them, but there's not a lot of those artists putting themselves out either. So it's, like, very rare for anyone on the world to hear that kind of stuff because they're native to Australia. And if they're not putting themselves out as much, then no one's hearing it, you know, so. Exactly. And I think, like, that's what makes you so special. Like, the sound stands out by itself when it comes up. Yeah. Um, and, like, that's more, like, just a side note, but, like, just, I think you'll find very interesting when you finally like really things kick off more and more and then with your songs like getting longer and longer in terms of the list of like things that you've released yeah it will become quite interesting how people find you because i mean like on instagram it never really just promotes um well i don't know how the algorithm works but it doesn't seem to promote like the most recent song necessarily so sometimes they might just like throw at you and say like oh you know this is like a video and you'd be like oh that's cool i wonder how long ago this is and it's like oh this is like his release from like three Three years ago ago, yeah (laughs) which is quite interesting right like i don't really know how they decide that but sometimes it's for the better it might just happen to be a song that they really like honestly i don't think us artists know how the algorithm works sometimes because it's always changing it's strange, and it right? always doesn't work in our favor it's so oh, I know. frustrating i think that's like artists of any different crafts across instagram they're all just complaining about it yeah <laughs> so I you, always, you always find it's such an annoying thing but there are creative ways around it mm. No matter how much you promote your music, it never does as well as something as like, say, you're getting a yogurt from the fridge or something like something so generic and basic. Yeah, does someone so will be much like, better. "This is so good," and you're just like, "Really? That was like, 
I didn't even try for that one. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of artists like that. I, like, I feel like when I go, oh, that's my favorite song, and then someone would say like, oh, I don't know. There's no story behind that. Yeah. And that was actually one of the questions I think I wrote for you. I don't know if you like ended up seeing that one, but I was like going to ask you like, my favorite so far, I think, is well. I think like I'm, I'm, other songs are like also like kind of going up there actually. But Butterfly was probably the first one that I really really enjoyed. Yep. And it's just like I don't know the sound of it was quite unique. Yep. Um, and I was gonna say like, oh, is there like any sort of inspiration or story or funny things about it, like memorable about it, like when you were writing or creating it? Again, that's I always find that so funny. A lot of people say my best two songs are still my first two songs, like Ignis and Butterflies, oh, yeah. which is infuriating because I put so much work in. I, I, personally, I think my stuff now is a lot better, but yeah. that's just down to my taste and interest. Um, but Butterflies was, again, one of those songs that came out very quickly. Um, Oh, it was like a 20 I wrote it in 20 minutes or something like it was super quick I remember it was just an afternoon where my brother's missus had come over I locked myself in my room just before dinner and I just got it out <laughs> and I think the whole story behind the song is it's supposed to sound like it's about a female but it's me falling in love with music and it's a story about me treating <coughs> my music and my craft as this like 10 out of 10 woman like, so I'm talking about very lovey-dovey material, but it's all about me falling in love with music. Okay, no, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, no, I feel, I feel like, and it's not necessarily to say, like, the most recent work aren't, like, as good or anything, but I think it's, like, there's something, for me personally, I, I find, like, I am tend to, like, be, like, attracted to some of the early release or, like, the first few songs that I connect with while, like, getting to know the artist. And that reason behind it is because there's probably, like, a raw energy behind it. Yeah. Like, it's, like, almost, like, something slightly quite unrefined yet. Yeah. Which is, like... <laughs> yeah, because it's you finding your stepping stones. Yeah. And then, like, as you work, then, like... <coughs> <laughs> for me, like, then the more refined songs and more recent songs are songs that I usually put on playlists and you kind of have, like, moments where you sit down and you let, like, things play through that you normally don't, like, sit down and listen to straight away. Yeah. And then they kind of find their moments for you to, like, actually, deep, like, sort of, like... Deep dive. I guess, like, deep dive it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, but, like, the new songs are really good as well and I'm really curious about, like, what you're going to release soon because you're like working on something right now as well oh yeah and well i'm still releasing like, once every month mm. but like i said there is an ep on the way as well on top of releasing every month so keep it busy with it um definitely pushing my boundaries as well because i this year was focusing a lot more on the business and marketing side of stuff and then it was like mid this year i looked back i was like damn i've only released like three songs this year i'm like even though i've been working on so much stuff behind the scenes mm. It doesn't come across as that to the public. I'm like, well, I want to push, like, consistency is everything. And even though I'm yes, being consistent behind the scenes, I want to just release as much music without oversaturating it as possible as well. Yeah. Like, you don't want people to forget about you in the sense so that, like, they get to get to know you. But, I mean, you have, like, a decent amount of, like, collection right now that, like, people can kind of work through as well. Um, I just noticed, like... There's exactly what you were talking about before. If there's something that picks your ear, you want to go through their whole back catalogue. Exactly. So having a bigger catalogue is just, there's so much material to go back to. And like, being versatile too, you can always pick from different things. Be like, oh, this is actually what I like. I don't like this part about this artist. You know, like, exactly. there's more and, variety. And, you know, people also have to learn to be like honest. Like I was saying, like, I sometimes feel like when I'm interviewing an artist, I feel like compelled to say like, I love all of it, but like, that's not true, you know, like, everyone who has like a favorite artist is bound to be like, definitely at least one or two songs where you're like, I'm just not feeling it as much, yeah. you know, like, it doesn't speak to me, it's not really the sound that I vibe to, it's just not something I dance to, yeah. but then, you know, everything else is absolutely amazing, and it's just, it's just people, like, it's kind of like eating food, like, there's absolutely no way you're going to be like, okay with everything someone cooks, yeah. Yeah. like, and, and there's like, no, I there's never it. a right or wrong answer, it's literally just your taste and interest, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and everyone's different with it. Cool. And then I was going to do one last question that I really wanted to ask was, so with rapping, a lot of the times I think people always like imagine like it's kind of like, dang, this person's like gone through some shit, <laughs> essentially. Because like everything they talk about is just so deep and so like intense and you're just like, 
how much have you like seen in life already but like for you like i don't think it's like necessarily terribly like dark or anything yeah but it is like you have like quite a i'd say like old soul and matured kind of like things to talk about yeah and is that like is that to do with like your kind of growth like do you have you like have you seen a lot? So, yeah, I was <laughs> I gonna say, seen that's cool. funny, you funny you say that, that because, because I have, have like, I feel like, like a lot of people say that I'm very mature for my age, age. and I think that's due mm. to me seeing a lot, like, I was out partying, like, smoking a drink at the age of 14, you know, like, I started doing stuff very early on, yeah. and I went through a lot of shit, like, yeah. and that's made me into the person I am today, and actually going back to that EP too, I, I don't normally like releasing a lot of sadder stuff on purpose. <laughs> because I feel like what you give to the what you put out to the world is what people receive from it yeah. to say like there's a lot of people if you're feeling down you might want to listen to a song that like puts you in that mood more. Yeah. or like your sad boy you might, yeah or you might want to put yourself in a happier mood and I want to I want people to feel better about themselves like I want to bring out a positive message so I try to steer away from that but this EP is going to be coming out. It's actually called Remembering the Old Me. So it's going back to a lot of those traumatic times and stuff and yeah. stories like when I was 14, like bringing the old me out so people show that darker side of me sort of thing and show the vulnerability of that and show how far I have actually come because I feel like it's important to show every aspect of me and not just like always show the bad side or the good side, but show all of it because it's made me who I am today, you know? So, um... What was the actual original question again? No, that's essentially it. I was just like, because I was asking, like, you know, like, have you, like, because you oh, seem, have I, yeah. well, like, because, yeah, you seem so well put together and, you know, you're young, but, like, you seem, like, generally chipper and happy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's, it's usually, like, and for me, I found, like, I mean, just, like, you know, you read different people's stories on Instagram and I'm, like, a person who scrolls Instagram forever. Yeah. Um, there's just a lot of really successful and in, like amazing people and it's not to say you should do that first to like get there but yeah a lot of people who are successful and the most disciplined people have gone through like that shit like they had to struggle for a bit and feel like they've gone to the point of like partying to the point where they just they don't even know why they're doing it anymore and then they kind of find like some kind of like part of themselves there from that on, that way onwards and it's like and even then i don't think it's that easy from there it's not just like oh i'll never like feel like i'm gonna be like doing something wrong again or like yeah. doing something that i don't feel good about again yeah but i think it's like that's the point where it really starts showcasing this person's discipline like really trying to like push things and like i know my life can be better and i want it to be better and i want it a certain way i and always march towards that. i always bring everything back to balance and i feel like yeah the people, the, the best people on this planet and in this world are the people that have gone through the deepest, darkest shit. And that's because they've experienced the worst parts of their life. So they know what they don't want to go back to and they know how they want to treat other people because they don't want other people to end in that same spot. I think it's just a fly. Okay, I was like, I hope it wasn't a bee because I'm like, I'm like, I'll try and stay calm. But yeah, I, I totally, and then like, you know, as an artist, like being able to emphasize and have all these kind of like understanding and feeling, like that's a whole different thing as well. It's just, it's such a unique thing to hold on to yeah you're right it's massive, massive chunky <laughs> fly shoo because i always say that like there's people <laughs> don't come to me <laughs> there's people that you know like if you haven't experienced anything you're gonna have such a plain jane lifestyle and you're not gonna understand what it takes so that's why those people who are doing very well they understand what it takes because they've been through that hardship already you know, yeah. it's hard to understand what it takes or like yeah. put yourself in that position unless you've already been through something way worse. And I feel harder. like your confidence really, like, when I listen to the way you sing, yeah. um, I mean, like, I'm not, like, necessarily very well versed in terms of rapping, but, yeah. like, I do think it's actually something, like, would be really fun to, like, get to learn to, like, do a little bit of. Yeah. But I find, like, when I listen to you, like, you sound, it's not really, like... I don't know how to describe it. Like, I'm not trying to say, like, other rappers aren't, like, confident. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But it's, like, for you, you sound like you really know what you're saying. And when you're saying those, like, lyrics, like, when you're rapping, it just seems like there's a confidence behind it. Yeah. It's, like, maybe not confidence or maybe, like, more, like, there's, like, um, a steadiness. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. So, like, if any new fans or anyone interested, like, how would they find you? Assuming they probably found this on YouTube or something. Yeah. Um, what would, like, 
where can they catch you for like a performance right now and also like your yep. socials? So uh, my on all streaming fl- platforms, my name is Tigar, that's T-G-A-R. And then on all social media, it's Tigar.official. Um, I'm performing on the 11th of October, so next Friday at the Civic Underground um, in Sydney City. Still yet to hear what my time on the set is, but um, if you want to cop tickets to that, hit me up or follow the link that will be provided. Um, and make sure you use code TGAR for 10% off. It also will help me out a lot. Um, and I want to see as many people there as possible. I feel like it's going to be such a good show. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a sellout show, so it's going to be an amazing night. There's like 20 artists on the lineup. I'm bringing a couple of feature artists with me as well. So it's going to be a massive night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think I checked it last night. It was down to, um, it's like the final release tickets. It's yeah. still general admission. It's a little bit like slightly higher, but it's like, I mean, it's a pretty cheap ticket for an, a huge show that's running for four hours. And there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of future artists that I feel like are going to do a lot for this country. So yeah, and there's a lot of getting while you can, like yeah, it's a missed opportunity if you're not coming. And I mean, like, like you said, like, I think the location gets, like hold like 300 people so it's going to be a fun show 100 um, percent. biggest but, show i've done to date easily yeah exactly down. and like make sure you do use the code because then that like um shows them that like you're coming here for him yeah and that would like really make an impact yeah um but yeah otherwise thank you so much for joining me in today and coming all the way out from like out west to Western the city, city <laughs> area no, that's... um you know city people are retor- notoriously lazy yep. or just like <laughs> oh, so happening. far away five minute walk you know? oh, yeah oh my god i have to go to the station oh oh my god i think my legs are just buckling <laughs> no i appreciate you having my... me it's been good <laughs> yeah um um yeah so i guess that's really it there's not yep. much else to add we've said so much um but i guess like um we'll keep in touch and it'll be always really cool to be able to like do something else and like yeah, do another yeah. interview again yeah i was gonna then. say if you ever want to have me again yeah especially like when your ep releases that would be yeah. a really cool time i was gonna say one last thing particularly that yep. would be really cool to like see within like a few months where you hit that point where you could go on stage in a performance yep. and actually even like have like timing enough for a set that you could just like throw out like a tiny like teaser for like a new song or something yeah. you know when artists do that and you're just like yes <laughs> like oh get a sneak peek they, they yell for encore and you start it and you're like ah oh, you're not getting the rest you're like Sorry nah, i actually don't remember my new song <laughs> i actually don't know how to do it yet <laughs> it's like, oh, oh no, never mind um oh yeah but otherwise thanks for catching this episode and um follow tiga and we'll catch you next time on something different sweet peace peace on the surface, got some nice curves in Every time you smile, got me lost for my words Stop sign on the searching, got me feeling nervous All these butterflies, but this time it's on purpose Oh, I gotta so be myself, she enjoying my cadences She loving all my complacentness So we wrap up in a blanket, get it freaky Not complaining, get a change of this babe I'm in Can I make it to the top? If it's time, come off the top But a deep infection I'm sick of this rhythm rejection This history given reflection can let my past define me on this path of finding all this harsh declining So I keep on rolling, let the wind blow forward Got a kneel over, oh this is my last assignment yeah. Gotta live on the road, Cause this bitch actually perfect